What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Lions video. Now over pretty much since Dan Campbell has been hired, the Detroit Lions new head coach has been under a lot of fire from the national media, whether it be from his first press conference as the Lions head coach, where he was talking about biting off kneecaps, being aggressive, being a mean team, and really, you know, hitting first and hitting hard for a lot of these football games, whether it be him playing cornerback or a lot of other positions at these mini camps and OT that are occurring or whether it be his most recent press conference where he wore a racing helmet in to the press conference to promote a local Detroit event. There has been no shortage of Dan Campbell slander in the national media. And in today's video, I want to talk about this situation. I want to talk about Dan Campbell, talk about some of the things he's done, talk about all the good that is being overlooked from our new head coach, and really talk about whether or not the national media is right on whether Dan Campbell is too silly or not serious enough to lead the Detroit Lions to any serious success. Now, before we get into the video, before we start talking about this Dan Campbell situation, if you're new to the channel and you are enjoying the content, please consider liking the videos and subscribing to the channel. It takes just two seconds out of you to do so. It's quick, it's free, and it's easy. As I said, it takes just those two seconds. So if you could take those two seconds to like and subscribe, I'd be very appreciative for it and you'd help the channel out more than you could possibly know. But if you could do that, take those two seconds to like and subscribe. That would be fantastic. But with all that being said, without any further ado, let's get into talking about Dan Campbell's situation and talk about whether or not the media is right and really trying to talk about this whole Dan Campbell scenario in general. So we got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One prime, baby! Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, since Dan Campbell took the job as the Detroit Lions head coach, there has been no shortage of opportunity nor a shortage of ability for the national media to hate on our new head coach. Of course, being the head coach of the Detroit Lions gives them ammunition enough, but when your head coach comes in and starts talking about biting kneecaps and starts wearing racing helmets and starts playing on the field with his players for OTAs, you know, they're, the national media is going to take some notice. And if you're the Detroit Lions coach, it's never going to be for positive reasons. You know, you have Joy Taylor and Con Colin Cowherd on their show saying that Dan Campbell is just not serious enough, that he is not, you know, a good enough head coach and that he's not taking his job serious and that they want better for this Lions community. They want better for the Lions fandom. You have, you know, of course, them saying that, oh, Bill Belichick wouldn't have done that. Bill Belichick wins Super Bowl. So if you don't act like him, you're not going to be successful. You know, you have Mike Valenti talking about how Dan Campbell is a cartoon, how he's just not serious enough to be successful in Detroit, and how he's never really going to be the guy that Lions fans want him to be because he can't stay serious. And yeah, I get it. I get that Dan Campbell has a very unique personality. I understand that Dan Campbell is a guy that is very unorthodox in the way that he may act in some situations, and he is very unorthodox in some of the ways that he is talking to the Detroit media and talking to the local news writers and article writers in Detroit. However, I think Dan Campbell's personality is making a lot of people overlook all the real positive things that Dan Campbell has done and all the real positive that is taking place here in the Motor City and especially here for the Detroit Lions franchise. Dan Campbell's big selling point as a head coach, Dan Campbell's whole thing as a head coach was that he's a good roster builder, that he is a good communicator, that he's going to get people in the building, whether it be coaches, players, or front office members, he's going to build a team from every aspect in every level. As I said, players, front office, or coaching, he's going to build an entire team, an entire franchise worth of players and coaches that are going to make this team successful. That was his selling point, his connections, his leadership ability, his ability to get people to want to come to Detroit and get talent in every situation, every aspect of the franchise. That was his selling point, was he's going to get people in the building, that he's going to get people ready to play and coach and do their jobs at a high level 
level. And yes, Dan Campbell is being a very silly person. Dan Campbell is making some comments that are unorthodox. However, that is not taken away from Dan Campbell's ability to do exactly what he said he was going to do when talking about building up this team. Starting with just the coaching staff alone, Dan Campbell has significantly upgraded this coaching staff from just about every aspect and every perspective. You know, looking at just the big time coach that he's brought in, you look at Anthony Lynn, the new offensive coordinator for this Lions team. Anthony Lynn was one of the most experienced in one of the highest graded offensive coordinators on the open market this offseason and instead of going to a multitude of different situations where he did have offers he decided to come to Detroit to play with Jared Goff he even came to Detroit knowing that the quarterback situation was not fantastic knowing that Matthew Stafford may not stay for a long time knowing there's a lot of uncertainty for this Lions offense and he still decided to come here and coach alongside Dan Campbell as I said being one of the top players being one of the top offensive coordinators in the entirety of the coaching carousel. You look at our defensive coordinator, you look at Aaron Glenn, a guy that had offers from teams like Chicago, where I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to be biased, Chicago has a more talented defense right now than the Detroit Lions, and yet Aaron Glenn, with the connection with Dan Campbell, decided it would be better for him to come to Detroit, take on a little bit bigger of a challenge, but come be a part of this family, come be a part of this Lions pride that is really going to take him in, and of course, give him an opportunity to be great with some very talented players on this defense. So Aaron Glenn being one of the more hyped up player or being one of the more hyped up defensive coordinators, having offers from places like Chicago with a more talented defense and with more talented players on that roster, Dan or Aaron Glenn still decided to come play with Dan Campbell because of that connection. And Dan Campbell, once again, getting a top coaching candidate and taking him and stealing him from arguably better situations and better teams that Matt Patricia would not have been able to do. Aaron Glenn Glenn, a far upgrade even on paper over Corey Unlin because honestly it can't really be worse than Corey Unlin. Aaron Glenn had that Saints secondary rocking a season to go and he is going to be a big part as to why Jeff Okuda and Amani Oruwari and Tracy Walker and even Will Harris are going to be players to take big strides forward. You know you also look at the positional coaches Deuce Staley one of the highest regarded running backs coaches in the NFL also being our assistant head coach will likely be the offensive coordinator next if Anthony Lynn does leave after this season or if he does leave a season or two from now. Deuce Staley is a guy that is looked at to probably be the next in line for offensive coordinator and a guy that has talked about that could in a few years, no joke, and a guy that realistically in a few years could be a top offensive coordinator candidate for a majority of NFL teams looking to fill that position. He's a guy that has trained and worked with and developed Shady McCoy and DeMarco Murray and more recently Miles Sanders for the Philadelphia Eagles. Deuce Staley is one of the highest regarded running back coaches in in the entirety of the league and instead of staying with Philadelphia or instead of going into a multitude of other places he decided to come work with DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams, and Jamar Jefferson in Detroit. Arguably not the best running back core in Detroit and a running back core a team that has not had a lot of rushing success recently but a guy nonetheless in Deuce Staley that decided to come play with Dan Campbell and coach alongside Dan Campbell instead of arguably and possibly better talent-wise situations. You know, you have you have Hank Fairley, the offensive line coach, who was looked at as one of the top offensive line coaches in the NFL, had the Lions offensive line as one of the top 10 units a season ago, had a lot of offers from other places, had a lot of offers from true contenders. You know, I heard, I believe there was a rumor that Kansas City offered him. There was a rumor that a couple other big time real true contenders offered him. And instead of going to a big time contender for more money, he decided to come back, re-sign with the Detroit Lions go back to his unit, go back to the guys he's already coached, and come back and coach with Dan Campbell. Under Matt Patricia, Hank Fairley would no longer be here with the Lions. He would be somewhere else, probably with a actual contender with arguably you know, not a better offensive line, but with a better overall team and a better overall offense, or at least better looking offense on paper. You know, you have Mark DeLone, a top linebackers coach in the NFL, a guy that has coached Khalil Mack, a guy that that developed and taught Roquan Smith and Danny Trevathan and Derek Johnson when he was on the Chiefs. You know, a guy that has developed a lot of good linebackers in the NFL and one of the highest regarded linebackers coaches right now is now a Detroit Lion. We stole him from Chicago, whereas Mark DeLone could have returned to Chicago, a guy that could 
could have returned to the Chicago Bears, continued to work with Roquan Smith, continued to work with Khalil Mack, continued to work with Robert Quinn as his as the linebackers coach, but instead decided to come here and work with Derek Barnes and Jelani Tavai, a linebacking core that is significantly less talented than the Bears, and yet somehow Mark Delone still decided to come to the Motor City and work with Dan Campbell instead of saying any more talented and probably a better situation talent-wise for him in Chicago. You also have Todd Wash, the mastermind and the defensive coordinator behind Saxonville, that 2017 elite defense that carried Jacksonville to the AFC Championship game. He is a guy that developed Josh Allen and Yannick Ngakwe, a guy that, again, as I said, made that Saxonville defense into what it was. He decided to come to the Detroit Lions when I'm sure he had several other offers as well. And then you look at Aubrey Pleasant, the top defensive backs coach in the NFL last year, coach Jalen Ramsey, coached a couple other really good players on that secondary. I know that uh, their rookie safety from Ohio State, uh, whose name is escaping me at the moment, it's something fuller. He had three interceptions a season ago as a fifth round rookie. You know, that Rams that Rams secondary a season ago was top 10 in interceptions with 14, 68 passes defended, being one of the top in the NFL. A guy that a top secondaries coach that could have stayed in a more talented secondary in LA decided to come to Detroit of all places to come help Jeff Okuda, Amani, Tracy, Will Harris all develop and become top secondary players in the NFL in their own right. You look at all of these coaching adjustments, you look at all of these coaching advancements and all of these coaching upgrades it's not too bad for a cartoon. It's not too bad for a guy that is too silly to get the job done. It's not too, it's not bad. Not a bad upgrade at all. Not a bad offseason as far as, you know, building up the coaching regime for a guy that is too silly and too meatheaded to actually do a good job in Detroit. Another point that I wanted to touch on as far as Dan Campbell is his past, the people that he's worked with before. Of course, as we know, Dan Campbell is coming from being the assistant head coach from the New Orleans Saints, sitting behind and learning from a guy in Sean Payton who is one of the highest regarded coaches in the entirety of the NFL, one of the smartest, one of the most successful, and as I said, one of the highest regarded coaches in the entirety of the league. And how funny is it that, that Sean Payton has nothing but respect for Dan Campbell? He has nothing but positive to say about his former assistant head coach. Why would Sean Payton take in this guy, Dan Campbell, to be his assistant head coach to teach him and say all these good things about Dan Campbell if Dan Campbell's not serious enough. If Dan Campbell is too silly, too goofy to be a true head coach, if Dan Campbell has no true qualities to be a good head coach and lead the Lions to any success, why did Sean Payton give him a chance in the first place? Why did Sean Payton only speak highly? Why does Sean Payton do all this and say all these good things about his former assistant, have nothing but respect for his former coach, if if Dan Campbell has nothing going for him, if Dan Campbell has no positives at all, why is it that everybody that he's worked with, everybody that he talks to, everybody from the Saints has nothing but respect for Dan Campbell. Everybody in the Lions media, everybody that talks to Dan Campbell on a daily basis has nothing but respect for Dan Campbell. If Dan Campbell was truly not a serious person, if Dan Campbell truly couldn't get the job done, Sean Payton would not have given him a job. Sean Payton would not have kept him for five years on the Saints coaching staff. Sean Payton would not speak as highly of Dan Campbell as he does if Dan Campbell could not get the job done. And if Dan Campbell wasn't a serious player and serious coach that, could, that you know, of course, has a personality as we've seen, but a coach that can definitely get serious and definitely get down to business when he's actually on the field. You look at the players right now, you look at people in Detroit talking about him. You talk about, you know, the the national media is talking all this slander and throwing all these bad things at him, but the, the local media, you know, the Detroit Free Press, the, you know, all the writers and authors and people that write for, you know, the people that write for the Detroit Lions, the people that write about the Detroit Lions, people that are local media that only cover Detroit sports. I have not heard a single bad thing about him. All I've heard is that, yeah, yeah, he's silly. Yeah, he has a personality. But at the same time, his practices are competitive. He knows what he's doing. Things are running very smoothly. We're seeing a lot of advancements and a lot of strides for many players, and not even small strides, but significant strides for many players. Everything that I've heard from people that actually talk to Dan Campbell, people that actually know Dan Campbell, people that have actually seen him do work day in and day out, have nothing but respect and good things to say about him. You know, you talk about optional OTAs as far as him connecting to players because that was his other big selling point. You talk about that, you talk about optional OTAs. Dan Campbell's team had 83 plus players out of their 90 on the roster attend non mandatory minicans and non mandatory OTAs, right? And the guys that missed, you know, right, were Jamie. 
Cade Collins, who was having a newborn child, and I would be very concerned if he was at minicamp or at optional OTAs instead of being with his family at that time. You know, you have Rakeem Boyd, who was injured and was then replaced. So he wasn't there because of injury. They very quickly replaced him because he was not on the field. You have two open roster spots because of the John Atkins and Nick Bodden and the Nick Bodden releases. So that's two more players. That's five of your seven players that are missing. Tyrell Crosby missed, which is your sixth player. And then Austin Bryant is injured, which is your seventh player. Every player that could be there outside of Tyrell Crosby was in attendance for Detroit Lions minicamp. Every single one. And that is not, and that is not to say, oh, we have the best team. Oh, we have the closest team, anything like that. But that does speak volumes about Dan Campbell's approach. That does speak volumes about how this team approaches and how this team sees Dan Campbell in a very different light than pretty much everybody else in the national media. If Dan Campbell was a joke, if Dan Campbell couldn't be serious, if Dan Campbell couldn't get the job done, why would all these players have so much respect for him? Why would all of these players come to optional trainings? Why would all of these players come and play hard for Dan Campbell months and months before the season when, you know, they don't have to. They don't have to be there. And yet, because Dan Campbell's there, because of the coaching staff Dan Campbell put together, all of these players, everybody that could attend was attending. And that, I think, again, speaks very big volumes about Dan Campbell as a head coach and speaks volumes about how his players and how his coaching staff actually views him as the new head coach and as the leader of this team. You know, I get the the questionable comments, right? I get the whole kneecap biting situation. I get some of the comments and some of the things that Dan Campbell does are a little bit unorthodox. And I get that that can be off-putting from a personality standpoint from Dan Campbell. But if you are a person that is not like Dan Campbell, if you were a person that is not a fan, or if you're a person listening to these national medias, or if you're, you know, maybe you see this because, you know, maybe you're looking up Dan Campbell stuff. I don't know if you're somebody that actually is somebody in the national media, Colin Coward, a Joy Taylor, uh, you know, whoever's talking bad about Dan Campbell, what has Dan Campbell actually physically done on the field for the Detroit Lions that makes you think that he can't do his job right? What has Dan Campbell done on the field as far as putting together a team, putting together a coaching staff, putting together a front office? What has Dan Campbell done negatively to hurt this Detroit Lions team significantly enough to say with 100% confidence and 100% certainty that he cannot be the head coach that the Lions need him to be, that he cannot be a head coach that builds a roster, that builds a team, that builds a family family and a pride in Detroit that is going to help this team be far more successful than they ever saw under Matt Patricia. Why is Dan Campbell's personality the worst thing that you can find out of Dan Campbell and that all of a sudden because he is a little unor unorthodox makes him in a, gives him an inability to coach or do his job at a high level. You know and even going in more specifically about some of his questionable comments and things right the kneecap biting situation even on Pat McAfee's podcast he came on and said that's not quite how he meant it to come out he didn't quite quite mean it to be that violent or quite mean it to be, you know, he didn't quite mean to say it in that way and didn't quite mean to be that aggressive or violent, but that's just how it came out because he's that passionate of a guy. So that questionable comment was, you know, rectified because Dan Campbell didn't even really, you know, he didn't mean it like that, right? He didn't mean to be that violent or that graphic. You look at that helmet thing, he was promoting a local race in Detroit. He was promoting it because he was just grant named the Grand Marshal of the entire race and he wanted to promote a, an, an event in Detroit to get these fans out and about to get them back at events to kind of re reinvigorate the sports culture in Detroit. And again, he worked for like five to 10 seconds, got a sentence out and then took the helmet off and got serious and went back to questions. You know, you look at him playing cornerback, you look at him playing positions at training camp that some people are concerned about. He's not the only coach that does that. If you are an athletic enough coach, you are going to do that. There are positional coaches all the time that play positions at OTAs and minicamps. The Lions had coaches last year that did that. Robert Prince was notorious for playing with his players and running routes with his wide receivers and trying to get the most out of them and get them to be competitive. Dan Campbell is an athletic guy. Dan Campbell, yeah, he's a former athlete. He's not in his prime anymore, but he is still an athletic guy. He is still a big guy and a competitive guy, and he's having fun with his players. He's breathing new life and new energy into this building by doing so. And to me, Dan Campbell has not done anything to deserve this slander. Dan Campbell has not done a single thing for this Detroit Lions team to show me that he can't be a good head coach. And actually, the contrary is true. The opposite is true on that. Everything Dan Campbell has done, everybody that he has brought in from a coaching staff to a player standpoint to a front office standpoint, everything that he has done on the field, everything that he has done for this Lions team 
only takes them in a positive direction, is only taking them in the right direction to be more competitive, be tougher, and get better coaches, and in turn, get better play from this team. So with all that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. I apologize if this sounded like a rant. I apologize if this sounded a little bit more aggressive than it was intended to, but honestly, this is getting ridiculous at this point. Dan Campbell is a fine head coach. Dan Campbell is doing very good, and Dan Campbell, in my opinion, is having one of the best off seasons a rookie head coach has had this year and probably one of the better off seasons that a, head, that a first year head coach is having in the past couple of years. So with that being said, that is life for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching the video. Let me know what you guys think about Dan Campbell down in the comments below. Do you like Dan Campbell? Do you not like Dan Campbell? How do you feel about the national media bashing our head coach? How do you feel about the national media's takes on Dan Campbell? Do you agree with them? Do you disagree with them? I'd be very curious to see how everybody feels on this topic. But with all that being said, that is life for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching. Until next time, and as always, go Lions!